This is a video to help answer the question of how to connect to SQL Server. Sometimes companies have SQL Server already set up and they have employees on it, but they may install Standard Time onto a new workstation for a new employee. When they do that, uh, by default, you'll see in the title bar, the Standard Time uses a Microsoft Access database. Uh, you'll also see if you go to the File menu and choose Database, that uh, we have the name of the ODBC file DSN right there. Um, that's a good tip-off that we're using the default Microsoft Access database. So all we really have to do is change the name to a new file DSN that connects to SQL and we're, we're probably good. Um, but um, I'm going to show how to create that file DSN using the steps here below. Uh, and um, then get connected to SQL. So before I do that, I'd like to actually switch over to SQL and show you some other things. Again, you probably already have SQL Server set up. If you don't, there's some video showing how to do that and how to troubleshoot connections. Um, but um, I just want to show one quick thing. I'm going to open up the security section and the logins. Um, you probably already know that um, you need to connect to SQL with a login, a SQL login, and you can either use Windows authentication or SQL authentication. So I'm just going to open up one here that is a SQL authentication login. Um, you'll notice that the default database is standard time. If I switch over to the user mapping and then click on the standard time row, you'll also see that we have db underscore owner rights, and that allows us to modify the database should we need to do that. So I wanted to just point that out um, and uh, so let's switch back over to standard time. What we're going to do is create a file DSN that will connect to SQL. So I'll go ahead and open up the ODBC administrator. We'll click on the file DSN tab then we'll click add. We're going to scroll down to the bottom, find SQL Server, click next. The name of the file DSN is going to be standard space time space SQL. Click next again. Then you have to enter the server. And this is where I can't really help, but you're going to have to know the name of your server for where your database is located. So I'll enter that. Click next. Um, in this case, I'm going to choose SQL authentication. Again, you can use NT authentication, Windows authentication, if you have that set up, if you have your login set up. But otherwise, um, you would need a login uh, ID and password. So I've entered those. I click Next. I'm going to connect to the Standard Time database by default. Click Next. Finish. And then I'm going to test that, and it says that the test completed successfully. So I know now that I've got a good file DSN that can connect to SQL Server. So I'm done there. The next thing I really need to do though, if I'm using SQL authentication, is to open that up in Notepad and add one more line to the bottom. And that is PWD equals and then the password. So I'm going to save that because the ODBC administrator does not save it. We close that, switch back over to standard time. Now we can simply go to the file menu, choose database, and here we saw the name of the file DSN that was used for uh, the default Microsoft Access database. So I've simply entered SQL here. So now the name is standard space time space SQL. I click OK, click OK, OK. Standard time will restart. You can see a completely different set of projects here. If I go to Tools Projects, I see all of my projects, and then you know that you're connected to Standard Time. Just make sure that the user over here in the upper right corner is the user that you are expecting. So that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do. And again, there are other videos for uh, troubleshooting SQL connections if you need those.